Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Boltor and I am a Spellweaver and welcome to Spellweaver. This is a game that has been in closed beta for a couple months now and I got into the closed beta roughly a month or so ago and I decided I'll make a YouTube channel for it. Um, on this YouTube channel I'm going to be doing game or deck spotlight videos, gameplay videos, just about anything anyone asks of me. Now, my, for my first video I wanted to take a look at a deck that I saw in the Spellweaver database a while ago and I wanted to comment on it but you can't comment on decks um, in on the de Spellweaver database just yet and so I decided why the hell not I'll make a video about it. The deck that I'm talking about is Epsilon Dawn's Order Nature Corruption Bounce deck. Now let's dive right on into it. This deck is centered around primarily Enter the battlefield effect creatures such as Venerated Unicorn, Mesmerizing Spirit, um, Succubus, and it's basically what it's trying to do to win is it wants to play cards like Succubus and Mesmerizing Spirit, bounce them back to your hand, and then play them again so that you get their Enter the Battlefield effects again and again. This deck also plays normally two Path of Transcendence for the same kind of effect but I only have the one Path of Transcendence, so I decided I'd try out a Spell Warden. Um, it's been having mild success. I rarely seem to draw Spell Warden, so I can't really comment on how its effectiveness is. This deck kind of looks like it's combo-y, but it actually plays more mid rangey Now, what I mean by mid-range is it's trying to win in the mid to late game. It primarily focuses on out-surviving Rush, and outrushing control. So let's dive right on into a game. Um, normally I would play against friendlies or a friendly game, but it's late and it's just easier and faster to play against the AI. And I'll do that for pretty much all of my deck spotlight videos from here on out. Now primarily you're wanting to open Blood Witch Harpy because it's a very good anti-rush card. And we're playing against Despina. She's got some early game creatures that Blood Witch Harpy takes out very effectively. So we're going to go ahead and keep this hand. And luckily she didn't have a turn one play. So we're going to open by playing the Corruption Shrine, getting the level. First thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to Divine Offering away one of the Blood Witch Harpies. Three is good, but it's a little overkill, just a little bit. So we're going to get a land and can make sure that we have lands so that we're never mana screwed. Alright, there's another that's another good thing for us. She doesn't have a turn two play. So we're going to play the Enchanted Spring for the for the mana and the ability. So we're going to be setting up for our combo when we draw cards like Succubus. We've got the Venerated Unicorn. Can't play it quite yet. Speaking of which, I am going to send back, I think, the Restless Tombs. And I'll take the Corruption Shrine. Again, just wanting to make sure that we have plenty of land to play and we can keep rocking. Oh, she doesn't have a turn three play. Oh, this is... This is just beautiful for us, isn't it? So, I am going to play the Order Shrine for level. Uh, this turns on Pacify. It enables us to play it. I'm going to send back, I think, the Tornado Outbreak. And hope there. All right. This one we can play for nature level, so we can have all of our three colors enabled. Wow, she is just not playing anything. Not that I'm complaining. But, so we're going to play this for the third. We're going to draw a card. There's a no, Restless Tombs. Then there's a Blood Witch Harpy. Okay. Yeah. When she's got nine cards in hand doesn't hasn't done anything, I'm kind of assuming she just <laughs> got the assassinate. So we're going to play Sanctum of the Void for its ability, and its ability is really good. And we're going to play the Blood Witch Harpy, and we're going to pass the turn. She doesn't do <laughs> anything again. So I'm going to throw away one of the pacifiers, because we don't seem to be needing it right now. I'm going to play the Corruption Shrine for the level, play the Restless Tombs, and we're going to swing. Deal two damage. And we're going to pass the turn. Ah, she finally plays Shadow Step Assassin. Gives it the Mutagenic Overgrowth. I'm not going to sacrifice a creature because we don't have one to sacrifice, but he is going to sacrifice a creature. And we're going to gain two life. And we're going to play this for level. Uh, we're going to hold on to the Venerated Unicorn because it does deal with... Um, implants, because implants, as you can see, are artifacts. So we should be able to deal with that 
No problem. Swing for another two. We do have the spell one, which I said I never see. But, so there's a gross experiment. And double Silverblade Warriors. That's a lot of dudes. All right. So we're going to sacrifice the zombie. Get another mana. Get another zombie. This is kind of the reason why this deck is, or this card is in here. Not only does it help you overrun your opponent in the late game, but it helps you kind of ramp yourself, which can be very, very important. This combo here really helps ramp you, which can be important when you're trying to establish board control. Now I am going to play the Venerated Unicorn, and we're going to blow up his um, implant. Then I'm going to bounce it, which I probably should have done. Um, before, or, which I probably should have done after I swung, but, oh well. <laughs> We're at a pass because you can just block, and nothing will, <coughs> excuse me. He can block with one of his warriors, and nothing will happen. So we're going to sacrifice the zombie because we're forced to. Toss back one of the unicorns, get, one of the, I'd get a nature shrine. Draw a card. Yeah, nothing really all that special. We're going to bounce the warrior. And I'm not an idiot. We will attack for face. He'll probably block. Or not. Doesn't matter. This dies next turn because he's forced to sacrifice it anyway. Ooh. Well, we're going to sacrifice this guy. And because of the turn of the curve we're on, or the turn it is, we're going to draw a card. There's another tornado outbreak. We make him sacrifice the card that he just invested all that into. Swinging for two. We'd be swinging for more damage if we drew <laughs> any other creatures, but, you know, we're winning according to what is on the board. We actually are going to take a second, bounce that back. And we're going to sacrifice that. I drew, yet again, Venerated Unicorn. I'm just drawing a whole bunch of creatures that don't really do anything for me this game. I'm not going to destroy my own Restless Tombs. I am, however, going to give my Unicorn haste. Or swift, I'm sorry. I played Magic the Gathering for a couple years, so my, you know, some of those terms are going to bleed over, unfortunately. I'm going to play the other Venerated Unicorn, and I'll tell you why, because I have the ability to bounce one of them back, and right now I'm just trying to fill the board, because I do have, I do have a board control, as it were, so I'm not really worried about getting overrun at this point. So we're going to play this for mana, draw a card, get Landslide, which is great, because it allows us to get rid of his two blockers, we can throw a Unicorn to kill that, and we swing for four. So as you can see, we didn't do a whole lot early game, and we are, you know, taking control and winning in the mid to late game. This is a pretty bad um, example of an early game. I mean, the deck, you're see, getting to see what the deck does, but <laughs> my, our opponent didn't really do a whole lot of anything, unfortunately. But, you know, what can you do? We're going to play the Jungle Death Trap. This is another card that's very interesting. Um, you don't really end up bouncing it as much as bringing it back for the... Um, or with the Instill Life, the deck plays two of them. And... But it's a very good anti-rush card, and it's actually a very good early game beatdown for the control decks that don't really play early game creatures. All right, well, we sacrifice the zombie, and... We swing for lethal. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me for tonight. If you like this video, please subscribe, thumbs up the video, everything, share it. I uh, be greatly appreciated. I'm trying to get this channel off the ground. Most of the people who are watching this, I understand, are people who already play Spellweaver. But if you don't know the game, you haven't played the game, but this is the first time you've seen the game, then I'll put a link in the description below to the Spellweaver uh, website where you can hopefully get into the closed beta.
May the cards rise to meet you and bring good RNG to your enemies' enemies.